My name is Kathy Hayden Richmond, and I'm your daughter's counselor, and I will continue to be until she graduates next year. I'd like to introduce our principal, I almost said president, principal <laughs> Linda Harvison, and our assistant principal Stacy Andrakane, who's in charge of activities and discipline at the same time. Uh, please feel free to get up and get yourself some drinks, and we have the wonderful sister Agatha Brownies that the girls always talk about back there, so please help yourself to one. I have been working uh, with your daughters for the past couple of years as we've get getting them ready for college, and it seems uh, it seems unbelievable to me as I watch them grow up because I remember talking to you all two years about about them getting driver's licenses, and now they've got them, and they're moving on to the next step. They are getting very serious about college, which is good to see. They're really looking at their options. And so today, basically, what I want to do is give you what I have told them so that you both have the same information and, uh, you know, what we are doing here at the Academy. We have a program here called Naviance that we use with the students. Uh, it can help them senior year. They can look up their application as to whether it's been sent out. Freshman and sophomore year, they took career interest and uh, abilities testing, uh, and we coupled that up with their emergenetics that they took when they first entered to look at the various jobs that they might be interested in or the occupations that they might be interested in and what, you know, with the emergenetics, what would be best for them within that occupation. Uh, the Naviance program, all of you also, I'm sure you remember this, were emailed a, a password way back when your daughter was a freshman. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, most of the accounts have not been activated. So if you would like to get more information and activate your account, just contact me and I will send you your passwords so that you can get on and get the same information that she is getting. At the end of this, I'll show you why we use the, or how we use the Naviance so that you can be more familiar. We also tell the girls to start junior year with scholarship searches. Waiting till senior year, they are so busy with all of their courses and all the senior responsibilities that they have that they kind of let scholarship opportunities pass them by. Some are very, very simple applications for them. And I was telling them there's something, there's a local, there's a national and a local Papa John scholarship. And Papa John just tells us you have a student receiving it, shows up, it's like Publisher's Clearinghouse with balloons and pizzas for the class and goes in and gives the girl a check for college. All they have to do is apply. Now we don't get it every year, but we do get it often. So something like that, I tell them it's worth entering. Um, any kind of scholarships that they can qualify for, whether they are work related, related to your work setting or uh, related to a church, Knights of Columbus gives them for each church parish. All those different kinds of scholarships are important and they can get as many independent scholarships as they would like or as they are able to get and they can still get scholarships from the colleges and universities. We have college representatives who visit often. They are on this campus. Uh, we are coming up on our college fair, as you see, on October 2nd. So they will be on this campus all next week and all the week after. And for the next month, we are loaded down with college reps. The visits are all on the SJA website on the calendar. If any of the schools that are visiting you are interested in hearing more information from, please feel free to attend as well. The LSU rep was uh, here already. He came out a couple weeks ago. This room was filled and half of them were juniors, so they were getting their information. I also hold College 301 groups, and what I make the girls do is we're trying to look through the colleges that they think that they are interested in, look at the average GPA and ACT, look at who gets accepted, what, what, is those, what are those grades that they need, and are they in the ballpark? And then what if they want scholarships? If they're thinking they want to go to Harvard, 
and they want a scholarship, that's going to be nearly uh, impossible. They do not give many scholarships at all. So if she's relying on a scholarship to go to a school, we always want them to have a sure bet school that they will go to in case this one doesn't come through for them. So that's some of the things we call ourselves dream killers when we do this, but that's okay. It's reality because they, they think they're going these places and then they look at the cost of them and it kind of changes. They're very realistic about how much colleges cost. Um, this is the comparison worksheet. It is online and they can work with it and download it. They have copies of it. And we go through all of the colleges. This is what I use in 301 with the girls so that they can have an idea, especially this admissions requirement and the size of enrollment. Sometimes they don't understand how small a school is or how big a school is until they really look at those numbers. They just know it by name. Okay, ACT is coming up this year for your daughters. ACT is recommended by ACT testing company and we follow their recommendations that they take it in spring of their junior year on the April test date. That is the best test date for them to take it. They've had, one of the reasons is the amount of American history they will have for that reading section, the extra math that they will have, all of the different areas, they do a lot of writing this year and there is a, a lot of writing, not actual writing, but grammar and rhetorical skills on that ACT English section that they will need. And of course, most of them have had or are in chemistry right now and that's important as well. I will go into the classrooms in October to register all of the girls for the April ACT. Uh, our reason for doing that is to make sure that all of them take it. It is a requirement for graduation that they take the ACT. The, there are certain things that they will need to take the ACT. Their social security number. This is very important that they have that when they register for the ACT. All of their records for TOPS for the state of Louisiana are by their ACT and ACT matches up their scores with their transcripts through the transcript system by their social security number. So that is why we ask them to know that social security number for the ACT. Now, no one sees it but ACT when they register, when it goes on through. They must upload a picture ID to take the ACT. I'm sure you've all heard of the cheating scandals that have gone on throughout the nation with standardized testing. When they come in, they must have a picture ID and it has to match the picture on the roster. If they do not have the picture that day, they can go back and register for it and upload it, but they must upload it by the week before the test or else their test gets canceled, their registration gets canceled. And of course, they have to have a credit card to pay for it. You can always save it and have her pay for it at home. Some of the girls bring the credit cards with them. If you prefer she not, that's fine. They have lots of retesting options. They can retest in June, in September, October, December. And if they're looking for specific things such as TOPS to get a higher GPA, a higher ACT for TOPS, they can go ahead and take it again in February and April of their senior year. They, so they have lots of opportunities to get that ACT testing in. The test, I believe, is $42.50, and then with writing is $50. We ask them to take it with writing once. It doesn't have to, they're all questioning if they have to take it with writing in April, and the reason is it's prom. And we understand that, and I've told them, I've given them plenty of notice to get those hair, hair appointments and mani-pedi appointments later in the afternoon, so, but that they don't have to take it with writing, which will let them out a half an hour earlier. Um, and that's ACT for PSAT. We will be giving the PSAT here on October 16th. This is the test that qualifies girls for the national merit qualifying uh, semifinalist round. 
Uh, we give this to all students as a benchmark as to where they are. They've taken it last year. Now they've taken it this year, and we want to see how they are progressing on it. Some of the girls said, why do I have to take it? I'm not going to be national merit, because we want to see how you're going to do on it and how you've grown from last year. We also want to see, do you score better on an SAT than you do on an ACT? And we had a student just yesterday said that she does better, and there's a comparison chart where they can convert their ACT to their SAT scores to see which score is a better score for them. So we tell the girls to go ahead and we convert the scores when we give them back their test in December, and they will be able to tell whether they do better on SAT or ACT. And, uh, but retaking the SAT is optional for the students. ACT, mandatory, SAT is optional. Okay, TOPS. TOPS has changed as of last year. So, and your girls have been told about it and told about it and they've been figuring things out, but there are, if your daughter or son graduated in 2013 or before, they have different TOPS requirements than your daughter does in the class of 2014 or in this class 2015. The core requirements are a 2.5 GPA and the 20 ACT, and that will give you tuition at any public university in the state of Louisiana. The, to get the tuition plus additional money, you must have a three point in the core and a 23 on the ACT. And then that gives you $400 a year, 200 extra per semester. And if you want the greater amount of awards, it's a 27 with a 3.0 on the core GPA. Uh, there is a grade estimator online, and Ms. Andrew Stacy Andrekane is handing out the forms right now, but there is a form that will show you what the Board of Regents requires for graduation. Uh, Bessie, core four, we follow the core four. Here, it's built into our curriculum, four units of English, four units of math, four units of science. We require three of social studies, and the state allows our sophomore religion, sophomore theology, to count as our fourth social studies. So that's how we have the core four for the common four. Your daughters have estimated, have gone through and estimated their TOPS GPA every single semester since they have been at SJA from freshman year on. So they should be able, should be able to show you, I've asked them to uh, say that because when they are looking at the colleges in 301, we go ahead and pull up that core GPA to see what the core, what their core is compared to what the colleges are looking for for core GPAs. Um, a lot of our girls, 50%, go to LSU. Now, we just don't focus on LSU, but LSU is one that I like the girls to be aware of their requirements, mainly because if they plan on going, they need to know what they have to have. Admissions wants the girls to have, requires the girls to have a core GPA of that 3.0. They must have a 22 composite with an 18 in English and a 19 in math. There is a program, it's now called Spring Invitational. A while back it was called Spring Testing. And for those students, they must have a 3.2 core GPA and a 28 on the ACT. And for the Honors College, it's a 3.5 core GPA and a 30 or higher on the ACT. This is where our Naviant site is. And here are the LSU requirements. The core units, you can get them on the LSU site. You see the four units of English, the four units of math, the four units of the natural science, and this is important, too, because if your child is one who is trying to boost her GPA um, and is not a science, it's not going to be a science major, LSU has dropped their physics requirements 
and you can take environmental science instead, physical science and, and environmental. So when we get around to scheduling, she may be talking about possibly taking environmental science, and that is fine for LSU. There's four units of social sciences. Again, they count our second year of theology and sophomore year as the fourth social science. Two units of the same foreign language, and it has to be two consecutive units. So if she did well in one and three and doesn't want to count two, it's either one and two and two or three. It has to be consecutive years. Now, the fine art is the one that is different, and this is the one that we have been talking to the girls about. For LSU, they require one unit of fine art survey, the academic class fine art survey, or two units of a performance course. So if she does not have the fine, fine art survey and she wants LSU, she has to have two credits in performance courses. So either four half credits of theater, music, drama, uh, dance, art, whatever. She can mix one unit here with another unit there, but they must have the two units of fine arts. And this is different than TOPS. TOPS only requires one, SJA only requires one, but LSU requires two. So we are really stressing with the girls the need to get their fine arts requirements so they will meet all the requirements for LSU admission if that's where they would like to go. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you, this is the Naviance program that I'm working with with the girls. And what it does is they can look up any school and find out more information about it. And as I said, y'all have passwords too, uh, and I, that's not a problem to get that to you. But for admissions, it brings up a screen for them to tell them the highest, the lowest, and the average ACT, as well as if they even report the average GPA. But it gives them a range of scores where they, can, where they should be within if they are looking at going to that school, as well as the percent accepted. If you're seeing that only 47% of the students are accepted, we don't, I don't want her to put all of her hopes into one school. She may be very well qualified for that school, but we don't know why Baylor is only going to accept half of the applicants. They're very popular is, is why, and that's, they can pick and choose who they want. Uh, admissions here, we do have Ms. Green, who is our college advisor, who will work with them. And we had someone looking at Brown the other day and saw that ACT score that was a little bit high. Um, and that kind of put it more in perspective for her as far as if she should bother to apply there for Louisiana State. So we pull that up for them to show them what the average score is for LSU the lowest GP, uh, ACT, even though they do accept 22s, is they list a 23. The highest around a 28, and the average GPA is a three point, which is what they want for admissions. Now, on the other form that I gave you is a list of the schools that uh, Board of Regents has put out, giving the qualifications, the minimum qualifications that students must have to meet, to be accepted to those schools. Each school gets to choose whether or not to raise those standards, and many have. When we're talking about the different uh, regional schools, such as Southeastern, Louisa, University of Louisa Lafayette, Nichols, McNeese, uh, UL Monroe, Northwestern, we want the girls to go and visit. Louisiana Tech, I left out. We want the girls to go and visit those campuses and get a feel for what the campuses are like. They, they have this idea, and the idea comes from hearing other people, and we want them to get on those campuses and really see what the campus is like and what is the best fit for them if they are unsure or if they're worried about their GPA or for some reason they are choosing that they want to go somewhere else outside of Baton Rouge, which is fine. 
then we want them to have the options to look at these state universities because they all accept TOPS, which takes away your tuition bill. Um, and then the last thing, as I said, was the Naviance, which we work, we're working a lot on the admissions requirements. Uh, where's my PowerPoint? This year, the girls seem very concerned about knowing what they want to major in. And so we're working a lot on tying in that Naviance, which freshman and sophomore year, their uh, career preferences, they said really didn't matter. Now all of a sudden, they're kind of right on track for them. And I've reset it for some so that they can retake the assessments. You have options or the ability when you log into Naviance to see how they did on the career interest and career values profiles. And then we talk, uh, tie it in with their Emergenetics profile. And we start to look at some of the college majors. What do the college majors require? Because that's a better picture for them of knowing what courses they are going to have to take at the next level to become a doctor, a lawyer, communication specialist, business, engineering. And that has helped them really narrow down. So when you're talking with her, if you would focus on that kind of, have her find the majors and the courses online, it really opens up their eyes. Um, one of the girls didn't think there was that much science involved in, in what she was looking at. And, was floored to see that she had four or five science courses a year. And it changed her mind pretty quickly as to what she wanted to do <laughs> since she didn't really like science. Um, but that's one of the things. And then we go back to that Naviance and look at their career, how they tested. And lo and behold, they didn't recommend science for her. And then all of a sudden, you know, things start to fit together. I don't want them to come out of SJA saying, I'm going to major in this, I'm going to do this, I know what my future holds, because I couldn't have told you at 18. I had no idea. And I don't expect them to, but I want them to know how to go about searching for it and know about and be educated about what their preferences are and where they are strong, where their abilities are. and. Uh, how to go about looking at the different majors when they get to the college level because so many change their major after that first year of college. Yes? Not the Emergenetics, the personality in, uh, there's a Myers-Briggs, <coughs> I think they've just taken it in religion class, theology class, but there's a career interest and a career work values profile in Naviance and they can retake that. All they have to do is tell me, and I reset it. Okay. And they retake it, and they get their results immediately. And you have access okay. through yours. Maybe some freshman year to now, what they need to know on the career, on the Emergenetics. Are there any other questions? When you're gone, can I have anything in October about the nervous thing? Is right. that, do you know if that's dated? Do I need to bring a credit card in? I haven't, but it will be in the October newsletter. The question was, what day in October will I be in their classes registering? I haven't set that up, but it will be in the October newsletter for you, and we'll send out a reminder to the girls. Can you just do it at home, or do you want to actually do that in class? You can do it at home. Uh, we just walk them through. We want them to answer all the questions once. Yes, we're going to walk through that. Right. Yes. 
We asked the girls, the question was about the writing section of the test. We do ask the girls to take it once with writing so we can see how they do and you just never know when that will help them out to have had the writing section of the test. Um, could you give us some guidance? We've received like several um, ACT prep courses and you know several different options that we could take. Can you give us any guidance as to what you recommend or what they should be taking? Really all of the ACT prep, there's not one that I could say don't take. Okay. Uh, well, some of them are one day, some of them are 12 weeks. The prices vary from you know, $90 to $700. It's what you want to invest in prepping for a test. I have recommended to all the girls, there's a free prep booklet that we have in, in our department that they can get, and I just ordered 300 more today, so they will have those. Uh, they will there are prep booklets in the store as well that are put out and to just practice taking it and get it through their mind this is not a one-shot deal they can go back in and retake this test but there's no one prep that I would say take this prep over that prep or this one has better results and what fits your schedule your finances and so forth and what she's willing to do for prep Some of the girls are going in and taking it in February. Um, we're going with the recommendation from ACT, that spring date. The February date, they can. Uh, it's not necessarily going to hurt them, but I don't know if it'll help them much either. ACT takes your high, all the schools take your best ACT composite score. What some schools do, and you will hear this, is super score. LSU doesn't do this, and I don't think any of the state universities super score, but a lot of schools do where they'll take your best subsection of the test, your best English, math, reading, and science, and average them for a higher ACT. No, as far as early admissions programs, those are mostly your private universities that are going to offer those. Uh, LSU will open up its admission, and the girls, I told them already, they will get an email from me on July 1st, 2014, to go in and apply. Maybe I didn't ask that right. Not early admission, but actually early. Starting college early. They can do that. There are different college programs that offer those, uh, and it's up to each college as to whether they accept college credit from a university when you go to apply. For instance, if you go and take a course at another unit, we had, in fact, we had a student who has college credit from University of Miami. Depending on where she goes, they don't right. necessarily have to. So I don't know. I, let me, I'll check on that. I, they used to have, we used to have some, we had, they usually want to go out of state, so, but we'll look at that. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Um, I heard that um, a lot of colleges require that freshmen live on campus. I'm wondering, do they all require that? Are there exceptions? Or? Each school is different about living. The question was, living on campus, are they required freshman year? A lot of campuses are moving away from that because they're accepting more than they have room for. So it would depend on each individual campus, and I would check with your campuses as you apply. I know LSU doesn't require them to live on campus anymore. They ran out of dorm rooms. Yeah. I do have some GSAT. Is that something they take once, or is that That's something they take. They took it as a sophomore, and they will retake it once as a junior. And that'll work. Is the ACT, is it a beneficial year? The ACT, one of the reasons we go in in October is because we are a testing center in April, but anybody in the U.S. can register here. So for our girls, we became a testing center so our girls could test here and be comfortable. So that's why we're registering them very early so that they can fill up the, the testing center before and not have to take another choice. 
we're a testing center for every test date. Do they say so often that do and zoom experience? Yes, they do. The dual enrollment will be for, for LSU, college credit for LSU. It doesn't count as high school courses, they count as college courses. So it counts more for the class itself, they will, it's advanced math, dual enrollment. The advanced math portion of it, they will get a grade at SJA. And that counts as their fourth math. The other part of that is the dual enrollment that they have to do, the extra part of it, that where they have to get credit for um, LSU through their system. Okay. So it would, it would be that they're going to have multiple high school credit. Right, for their right. Okay. okay. Yes? So all of these courses are on AP credit? AP credit, uh, it depends on the AP course your daughter has taken, but they usually list it in the LSU catalog how much credit they will give. Usually you have to have a three or above to get the basic entry level credit on any advanced placement course that you've taken or that your daughter has taken to get college credit for it automatically. Any other questions? Okay, I have my business card. Oh, and Jackie Labotte came in. She's our associate principal. She's in back, and she's here to join us as well. Uh, if you have any other questions, you're welcome to stay. And I also have my business cards up there if you need to email me and get your password for Naviance. Uh, you can do that as well. Thank you all so much. <laughs>